explains Common Core history. Hello there, my name is Mr. Q, and in this chapter of Common Core history, we're going to be checking out the Iron Age. So put down those bronze swords, we don't need them, and pick up the iron sword on your desk right now, mister. As you know, from previous chapters, people started living on farms around 10,000 years ago. They started building cities a few thousand years after that, and by 3000 BCE, many of them were using a man-made metal called bronze to make their tools and weapons. Now remember, all these dates are approximate because things didn't happen at the same time in Europe as they did in China or Africa. Bronze Age civilization lasted for hundreds of years and then really quickly disappeared starting around 2000 BCE. Why? Well, not for any one reason. There's a whole bunch of reasons. Population growth, droughts, peasant revolts, and governments that didn't have any answers to these problems. So that's just a few. This, that, this rabbit hole goes deep, guys. The Egyptians blamed invaders called the people of the sea for ransacking their cities, but did the people of the sea cause the downfall? Or did they invade because things were already going bad and they were hungry? Don't know. By 1700 BCE, great cities of the Indus Valley had been abandoned. They're gone. No one's living in them. The Hittites and the Mycenaeans were gone around 1200 BCE. And the Shang state collapsed in China. Bronze itself was also a bit of a problem. It was made from tin and copper, and tin was actually quite hard to find. This made it expensive. People start to use iron instead because there was a lot more of it. But it was harder to work with than bronze because it took a lot more heat to melt. As you can see, tin, not that much. Copper, eh, a little high. Iron, oh, that went up pretty high. But once people learned how to make hotter furnaces, iron replaced bronze as the metal of choice. Its swords and hammers were stronger and they're cheaper, especially when combined with carbon to mix steel. Eventually, new civilizations emerged and a lot of them had ideas that would help shape the world that we live in today. And one of them had to do with religion. How do we define religion? Well, the word comes from the Latin religionum, which means to show respect for what is sacred. Every culture in the world develops some kind of religion because the question, why are we here is like the oldest question ever. Creating an organized system of beliefs and practices, people prayed for good harvest and to be protected from bad things. They would live their lives a certain way to prepare for what they thought would happen after death. Usually gods would represent different areas like war, love, food, and learning. This was called polytheism. But when a poor people called the Israelites, who lived in a place called Canaan, said all of this could be represented by one being, they started an idea called monotheism. This gave birth to three major world religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The belief in one true God led to followers telling other people they couldn't believe in their multiple gods anymore. And this led to lots of fighting. But at its best, religion can be a really nice thing that encourages people to be good to others and have respect for something greater than themselves. All that thinking and studying and quest for understanding did a lot to move civilization forward. Other major world religions developed in the East, like Buddhism and Hinduism, and we'll talk about them in future chapters. Thank you for watching. Please tune in next time for chapter four, Greece and Rome. As always, please like and share the videos. But if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe, hit the notification bell, so you can join our community here at A K Explains History, A K E H for the win. Goodbye, peace.